Okay, just to recap a small bit about springs, if you have a spring and you apply a force, it extends, and that extension depends upon how stiff that spring is. And we can use the equation that says F is equal to Kx, or sometimes we say that F is equal to Ke, or indeed F is equal to K delta L, where X, E, and delta L, so this is just a change in length, are the extension of that spring. Uh, and K is what we call a spring constant, and it has the units of newtons uh, per metre. And what we can do is if we look at uh, maybe the extension of a spring before it gets to its limit of proportionality, which is pretty much the same as its uh, elastic limit, we get a graph that looks a bit like this. So here's my graph. I've got force on the y-axis and extension on the x-axis. And what that means is if you look at the gradient, the gradient is equal to f divided by x, and f divided by x uh, is equal to the spring constant. So what we can really say then is that the gradient is equal to the spring constant of that spring. Now, it's pretty straightforward for a simple spring, that's all nice and simple. But what happens if you maybe had springs which were in parallel? What happens to their spring constant if we're looking at maybe two identical springs or just any two, any two springs which are in parallel? Well, let me just draw that out underneath. So here are my two springs which are in parallel, and let's just, for, for the sake of this, imagine that these springs all have the same constant of little k. Well, if you have two things, what they're going to be doing is they're going to be sharing that load. So although you might have a, a certain force applied to it, the force on each spring is actually only half of that. And that means if you apply the, the same force that you apply to this, your extension that you get would be half as much. Okay, so what that means is if you had the same force, you'd have half the extension. And if we were to plot it, we'd get a line that looks a bit like this. Now the gradient here is going to be twice as steep because for the same force you get half the extension um, and that means here um, the gradient that you're going to get is going to be twice as big and that means the spring constant increases. So in this case here what we could say then is maybe our total spring constant for two springs in parallel is equal to k1 plus k2. Okay, so their spring constant increases. But what happens if you have springs which are joined end to end? And this is what we call a series arrangement. Well, here, when you apply a force, you're applying that force to the top spring, and the, same, and the bottom spring experiences the same force. So maybe you think about them individually. Uh, you apply a force to the spring, and it, ex it extends by a value of x, but so does the bottom one. And what we then get is our total extension is equal to 2x. So if we look at the graph over here, for the same force, we're going to get twice the extension that we would have had otherwise, and then we get a gradient that looks a bit like this. So what we have now is a, a spring which is in series, and here, um, the more sp springs that we add uh, along the series, so if we had maybe three or four, for the same force you get an even bigger and therefore a lower gradient of, uh, of line there, and therefore a lower spring constant. In fact, there's an equation that says 1 over kt is equal to 1 over k1, plus 1 over k2. And of course you could increase this with 1 over k3 plus 1 over k4, depending on how many springs you had in series. So this equation here and this one here uh, are the equations that we can use for springs in series and parallel. And what you might notice is that there's a similarity between these equations uh, and maybe um, something to do with resistors. But in actual fact for resistors it's opposite. If you have resistors in series, uh, I'll just write out the resistor equations just by the side. So in red here are the equations for resistors in series, which is R1 plus R2, which is opposite to this. Uh, and you can see that, again, these are kind of the opposite equations for um, in parallel. However, there's an another device called a capacitor. Uh, and with a capacitor, uh, what we can say is that 1 over Ct is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. This is the year 13 topic, by the way, which I've got some videos on if you click on the link at the end of the video. But there's a big similarity between capacitors in series and springs in series. And also, if you have capacitors in parallel, then we say that Ct is equal to C1 plus C2 if we add up all the individual capacitances. So in many ways, um, the, the way that springs behave in series and parallel is analogous to the way that capacitors behave when they're also in series and parallel. Now, as a final thing, what would happen if we had two springs? Uh, again, all these springs have a spring constant of little k. What would be their total um, spring constant if we had two in parallel and then one in series? Well, effectively, what we can do is group the top one together, and if we think that maybe that's got a value of k and that's got a value of k, what would be the spring that has the same combined um, spring constant as both of them? Well, this is uh, springs in parallel, so we can say that, effectively, the top thing 
we can think of this being replaced as one big spring. Uh, and remember that uh, kt is equal to k1 plus k2. And that means this top spring here, if we kind of get rid of these, has a, effectively a combined kind of um, spring constant of 2k. Okay, so we've got effectively a 2k spring and a spring that has a, a value of k. We can now use uh, effectively springs in series. Uh, and what we can say is that 1 over the combined spring constant is equal to 1 over k, which is the bottom spring, added to 1 over 2k, which is the spring constant of the top one. So this thing here gets a bit complicated. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by little k. So what we then get is k over kt is equal to k over k plus k over 2k. Uh, what we can see then is that these cancel out. So k over k is equal to 1 and k over 2k is equal to a half. Okay, I'm just going to write that out again. What I'm then going to do is multiply both sides by 2. And what we find then is that uh, 2k over kt is equal to 2 plus 1. So I've just multiplied both sides of that equation by 2. Uh, we can then kind of tidy this up because we know that 2 plus 1 is 3. And therefore we, what we can say then is that maybe 2k over kt is equal to 3. And if we re rearrange this to make kt the subject, we can say that kt uh, is equal to 2k over 3. So what we find then is that effectively that the combined uh, spring constant of this series of springs here is equal to 2 thirds of k. So that's just the last bit. Hope that makes sense. Hope I've not gone on too long. But that's pretty much all you need to know. It doesn't really get much harder than this. But that's very much what happens if you have springs in parallel and series.